Get ready for the quickest and fastest indoor motorsports machines in the world, the Super Modified Mud Racers. The objective here is simple. Each racer will deal with an 80-foot long, 36-inch deep mud pit with another 80 feet of distance past the finish line. The objective is to run that first 80 feet at as short an elapsed time as possible and then stop the vehicle from 60 miles per hour in the second 80 feet or risk disqualification. The first driver up is a regular nationwide on the U.S. Open Association Camel Trail from Colchester, Connecticut in a fiberglass body Jeep CJ funny car. It's Pat Riley's Hellfire. pass to start things off. Riley actually shuts the engine down before the finish line. Riley's elapsed time, 1.821 seconds for the local campaigner in front of his hometown crowd. And I gotta ask you, buddy, that's gotta make that work pay off. Yes, it sure does. You guys literally worked all night long and all afternoon for this thing. Yes, we did. We had to get it going for tonight. But the big question is, do you think a 182 is gonna hold up in this thing? I hope so. There's tough competition. I don't know. That's for sure. We will see. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for this guy. He deserves it as much as anybody here. Pat Riley and the Hellfire Jeep. Riley's machine puts down an exceptional run. One of the quickest he has ever gone with small block Chevrolet power. But coming up is one of the crowd favorites here at Worcester, Massachusetts. This is Mike Spina and the Psychotic Beast. The wild man of mud racing in New England who has probably one of the largest single groups of traveling fans in the sport. A 2,000 horsepower our supercharged fuel-injected Chevrolet engine in this lightweight machine waiting for the green light. A full throttle run on the brakes hard. He'll stop it within the required distance. The elapsed time, 1.876 seconds will qualify. Number two. Here's the 1985 U.S. Hobbit Association world champion and a driver who put New England mud racers on the racing map. Out of the state of New Hampshire, David Ray's full-bodied Ford Midnight Magic. An incredible run. Unbelievable. This guy has been involved in mud racing since the beginning of time, literally. I mean, he was a world champ six years ago. But listen to this. You just witnessed the quickest run in history by a full-bodied truck. 1.775 seconds. Unbelievable! That's the above. <laughs> you knew all along. You said this thing's gonna fly, and it did. Yeah, I just can't believe it. It's starting to really come together. And you know something? I think I can make it go faster. I'll tell you what. You're probably gonna have a chance because I can't see that getting knocked out of the top four. Number one qualifier guy. Thanks, Brett. And one has to remember how heavy that vehicle is. Here's Chad Miller, the instant T supercharged Chevy-powered Roadster, a 1927 Ford, out of the state of Ohio. This is always a tough, tough car. Miller's machine, like most of the entries, weighs in at around 2,400 pounds or so. But keep in mind, that big blue Ford we just saw weighs about 3,000 pounds. Miller inches forward is now staged. The Christmas tree countdown begins. And Chad Miller, hard on the brakes, will stop it in time. 1.885 seconds. That'll qualify number four, but remember only the four quickest drivers get into the championship round. And now here's a guy who has to go quicker than that number to qualify. One of the few championship racers from the state of Vermont, Steve Abbott and the Risky Business. Nitrous oxide injected Jeep CJ, always one of the hardest launching cars. Unbelievable wheel stand. Abbott puts her sideways to try and stop it with an elapsed time of 1.99 seconds. But here he comes, the quickest man in mud racing history, the world record holder at 1.683 seconds, Milwaukee's Jeff Acker and the supercharged Chevy-powered Insanity. Hard on the brakes, trying to get it to stop. He does it. Was it good enough to qualify? How about 1.764 seconds? We're playing this game again, shutting it off before the finish line, and the thing is flying. Now, if I had to guess, I would have said it spun the tires a little bit more than it did last night, and you'd be the one to know. Yeah, it did spin a little bit harder tonight. I put a little bit more into the blower, and maybe I overdid it. You think that 176 is going to hold up? You told me last night a 178 wouldn't. Um, hoping it will, because it's getting pretty slippery down here, so I think we might see some DQs. We'll see what happens, and let's hope we don't. But in any case, a great, great job. 
That's an interesting statement. If he thinks it's getting slippery and drivers won't be able to stop it within 80 feet, you may see more drivers shutting off early. But for the Ford fans, how about a supercharged Ford-powered Thunderbird funny car? This is Mark Watros out of Michigan and the Team Rancho Shock Absorber X Championship drag racing machine driven by Mark Oswald, now a super modified mud racer. What a run! The elapsed time, 1.779 seconds. And here comes the winningest super modified mud racer of all time three-time and defending world champion Tom Martin in the brand new nitrous oxide injected Chevy powered Super Trooper 32 Chevy. Right now he must run quicker than 1.821 seconds to knock the Hellfire Jeep of Pat Riley out of the quick four drivers who will return for the Camel Shootout and the championship race. Martin with the trademark flashing lights waiting on the starting line for the green light he always takes as much time as he can to get ready for each run but at 42 national event victories he's tough martin shuts it off early hard on the brakes he'll stop it within five feet the elapsed time, 1.745 seconds. Number one qualifier, followed by his arch rival Acker in the quickest field in mud racing history. In just a few moments, Super Tracks continues with more motorsports action. We're back at the Central in Worcester, Massachusetts, continuing qualifying for the four-car camel shootout in super modified mud racing. But the most incredible aspect of this event so far is the fact that it is now already the quickest field in history. It takes a run of 1.779 seconds just to qualify. The first machine up, a supercharged Chevrolet power plant in a Ford Bronco body. The total obsession machine on the brakes hard, 2.01 seconds will not qualify. That'll bring up Tony Ferrodi out of Detroit, Michigan, the supercharged Chevy T Roadster called Let's Boogie. We've seen Ferrodi pick up a victory so far this year on Super Tracks. He is a threat for the Camel World Championship in 1991. Staged and ready. An incredible launch, hard on the brakes, Ferrodi goes out of bounds by a matter of two feet. And as you can see, these drivers are facing a piece of heavy equipment right past that DQ line. It's mighty touchy down there. Here's the supercharged small block Chevy powered machine of the Sturkin brothers out of Holland, Michigan. On the brakes hard, the elapsed time for Sturkin, 1.80 seconds, just misses qualifying. Here's Todd Marion's gorgeous new carbureted nitrous injected Jeep CJ funny car called Expect No Mercy. He's no newcomer to this business. Shutting off the engine early, a 1.88 second run, and Todd Marion knows he is a tenth of a second off the pace needed to qualify. Here's Rich Marcini out of New Jersey. The naturally wired, nitrous-injected, big-block Chevrolet Coupe has had a banner season in 1991, but it would still take a career best for him to break into this field and run quicker than 1.779 seconds that it now takes. And Marcini shuts down early, and that may have been his undoing. 1.94 seconds is one of the quickest passes he's ever made, but it won't be enough to get in. Here's one of the campaigners who finished in the top 10 in the Camel Series last year. This is Iowa's Byron Tinky, the supercharged, fuel-injected, Chevy-powered 1932 Chevy Coupe called Bad Habit. Stages up. He shuts the engine down before the finish line in hopes that he could stop it in time. The elapsed time, 193, and it won't get in the field. This time around, Melvin Brown's radical supercharged Chevy-powered rear engine dragster from Ohio called Red Heat. It would take nearly a career best for this man to qualify for the program. And keep in mind that Melvin Brown is the only active driver on the tour that drives not one, but two cars in each U.S. Hobbit Association Camel event. 
The ground crew connecting the kill switch that will automatically shut the engine down at the finish line. Look at the intensity on Melvin Brown's face as he moves up to stage this car on the starting line. Backing up and electing to restage the machine. Now leaving the line. Hard on the brakes, he's going fast. Absolutely incredible. Melvin Brown gets a disqualification but stuffs the car in the only opening in the shutdown area. Ladies and gentlemen, come over here a minute, Melvin. Melvin, I gotta tell you, it's obviously a DQ. The elapsed time is the quickest of your life, 1.768 seconds. It would have got you in, but how you pulled that off, I will never know. You gotta look for a small hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta look for a real small hole. That's absolutely astounding. I'm almost inclined to believe you had your eyes closed during that whole thing. No, I can see. You must have, guy. Unbelievable driving job. Ladies and gentlemen, you won't ever see that anywhere ever again. One of the most astounding driving jobs we have ever witnessed. The opening was literally only as wide as the car, but missing the front loader heavy equipment, he stuffs it into its own private parking spot and comes out of that uninjured. Next up will be Paul Schaefer, the man who now drives the car that took Tom Martin to three consecutive world championships and now is part of Martin's team. The Mud Patrol nitrous injected big block Chevrolet again would have to run a career best one of the straightest runs Schaefer has ever made. He stops it in time. The elapsed time, 1.89 seconds, however, will not help him. And right back on the starting line is Melvin Brown in his other machine. You saw the rear engine red heat dragster. Here's the nitrous injected front engine, Blue Max Jeep funny car, Melvin Brown from Ohio. One has to wonder if Melvin isn't a little gun shy after that unbelievable episode. And you bet, Melvin's gonna shut it down and just leave Worcester, Massachusetts in one piece. The elapsed time for the Blue Max, 1.98 seconds, but here are the four drivers who have survived qualifying, Tom Martin, Jeff Acker, David Ray, and Mark Watros. But who can forget the ride that Melvin Brown took? Can the action get any wilder? Here at the Centrum, the same fans who witnessed the quickest qualifying session in mud racing history are now ready for the Camel Shootout. The four quickest qualifiers who get one run each in order to win the overall championship. And the 85 world champ David Ray is on the line. The New Hampshire-based full-bodied Ford. A great run, hard on the brakes. Unbelievable, he stops it in time. Not bad for a track that's got some ruts in it. Thanks, Brent. You had to feel this thing coming on. This thing's got some speed in it. It flies at the finish line. Yeah, I can't wait to try this thing outdoors in 200 feet. <laughs> the question is, do you think that's going to hold up to win this thing, 185? I don't know, but at least I made it in the shootout. First time in my life. That's true. Congratulations for a past world champion. You never got the respect you deserved, but this thing made it for you tonight. Thanks, Brett. On the starting line, Jeff Acker's incredible insanity roaster. He qualified at 174. On the brakes hard, and Acker goes out of bounds and may actually have damaged the front end of his insanity machine. A 182, and that will leave three-time world champion to try and beat David Ray's 1.865. On the brakes hard, and Tom Martin, the world champ, goes out of bounds, wasting a 173. Mark Watros's Team Rancho machine was unable to make the quick four, but now he goes Spectrum with Super Mod.